Hey, that's me back again. I thought I would just um, tell my friend that she's on video. <laughs> and also, no harm to check the position of the camera as well. Okay. some changes I don't know if um I don't know if actually those changes are because the flower has moved or because I or the light has changed or because I'm observing freshly now things that I assumed were in other places earlier you know the way that's the thing with painting you're constantly measuring and adjusting and readjusting and all that it's funny how I had planned to do the yellows and now here I am still exploring the jungle of green there is quite a jungle of green on the run up to the yellow i'm quite happy exploring this jungle finding out what's happening here i'm getting to the edge of it now like and if i think about the flower too much i might start to wonder as to how i'm going to explain that but it's going to be just similar to what i'm doing here really i just look at a shape see what colour it is, try best I can to make that colour, best I can to make the consistency that'll capture the mark and then just do it. So there's nothing for me to worry about with, with, regarding the, with regard to the yellow. Just because I change colour doesn't mean I need to become all kind of fretful about it or something. And of course, sunflowers have got a precedent, don't they, with Van Gogh's beautiful sunflowers. And there's this whole kind of expectation that could be there for artists when they approach this as a subject. So there is that as well. But in the end, as I say, it's just another colour beside a colour beside a colour, like any painting is. And my, my interest lies in best I can capturing what's going on in front of me. And um, uncovering something like that, you know, discovering, I suppose. Oh, here's Lily, I think. She's getting, coming down. So we made a conversation with Lily, maybe. Put some yellow into the green for this little one here which is kind of bright as it winds its way up like an S shape These greens that are extending out above. Above these bright yellow petals. And there's even a green that I can see. I don't know what's causing me to wait to do the yellows. Something is, because I'm seeing the green on the other side of the sunflowers being the next step rather than anything in the yellow of the flower and those greens on the other side are a little bit more of a bluish shade good girl Rosie okay Hmm. Maybe I'm thinking that like it, once I start on the yellow, that's it. I'm not gonna. That's the end of the green or something. Maybe that. 
that's why I'm so set on doing the green separate from the yellow and and first so that I can clear it all out and then bring in my brighter colours for the yellow, bright clean yellows. That's the thing, if it's not clean, the, it's, it's something I don't want to disappoint. I don't want to have a disappointing dullness in the yellows, like they're so glorious, aren't they? Sunflowers, even as they're dying, there's a kind of a rusty brightness there. And I want to capture the colour as truly as I can, so I think that's maybe what's causing me to linger over the greens and be sure that I've got all of the greens in. I don't know. I kind of don't have to know as long as I feel like I'm, my energy is right, you know. My energy is kind of still invested in this. Invested in the bits I'm looking at now. If you're ever in Edinburgh, you could visit the 10 to 10, to 10 deli. It's a lovely Indian restaurant where I had my lunch. Oh, it's really delicious. I had a lovely morning, actually, because I visited the book festival. If any of you are listening who did my portraiture course in mixed media, you would you would remember Angus McNichol, who used to be called Black, Black Angus. Um, he was a, a poet and he had dark black hair, but when I met him... All of his hair and beard were completely white. But like his wife was saying at the talk, she did a talk about his his work and uh, about creating a book of his poems after he died, which was in 2022. She said that um, he always had the look of a bard about him. And a lovely man. He sat here at this table modelling for me a few years ago. Anyway, I, I went into the book festival to attend that event, get my book signed by the poet who helped his wife finish his, finish Angus's work for the book called Beyond, Angus McNichol. And um, and then I went for my lunch, but I also bought a book, so I was able to read over lunch as well, which I love. And the book is um, called The Outrun by a, a, a writer called Amy Liptrot, who lived most of her life, or the first 18 years of her life anyway, in Orkney, the islands of Scotland. And tomorrow night I'm going to see a play based on the book. So it's my intention, best I can, <laughs> to get through most of the story before going to see the play. Bearing in mind that I think I've reached page 20 or something so far. I was just reading it on the bus as well there. But um, I don't know how long a book takes to read. I'm going to look that up so that I have some idea whether or not I can manage it. Because there's other things I want to be doing as well, of course. All the little boxes to take, you know. And I want to enjoy the book, not race through it. So there's a few little extensions of um, these sunflowery bits, you know, the little bits of green tendrils almost extend out. I'm not sure exactly what's happening with all the yellows in there. It's there. There's really five thriving petals that I'm noticing. and The rest of them are all a bit... They're a bit kind of past their glorious stage, you know. They're shriveling. Beautifully shriveling. But shriveling nonetheless. So I'm not sure how I'm going to capture them. We'll see. There's still a few bits that are that I want to define a bit more clearly as being really, really dark in the greens. Well, there's this section here. And then 
and there's this section here. And this bit in here. And yeah, back there, but not quite as dark as the bits in the front. Yeah, and really, this is generally dark too. This area. I think maybe I have a tendency and it's a pattern in me that avoids doing stuff. So I, I don't want to enter into that kind of state of fearful avoidance or something like that. Like, so I cleaned out the middle of the palette now, cleaning my brush really well. I'm going to pick up again some of that cadmium yellow. The cadmium yellow that looks like that. Almost shiny enough for the brightest one I'm seeing. Let's see if it is. I think it is. The angle is different. It needs to go that way. Yeah. I'll just take that little leg off there best I can. Oh, sorry. Bumping against you. touch of yellow ochre or something there found its way might need to just live with that no I don't want to out damned spot alright no I'll carry on with my yellow, half closed eyes, bright yellow petal here, there's a bright yellow one too that's down here, maybe a little bit higher, and it extends out as far as just beyond that, yeah. And there's a third bright one, kind of equidistant between the two, maybe a, a touch, maybe about there. And it might be a touch redder actually that one, so I might change the colour of that in a minute. I'll just put it in when I've noticed it. And there, there are more touches down here of that bright yellow. And there are also, I'm noticing a couple of bits of green that I've missed as well along here which doesn't need to be observed like with that same kind of vigilance as every single part of it up to now has been but I want to capture it all the same as faithfully as I can And this one's a little bit there. So that's wet now and I won't be wanting to touch that with my rusty coloured orangey yellowy. This is the colour I've come up with for some of those withering ones. Is it? Mm, not so clear. On that. I feel like I, I want to start from scratch with that colour. Maybe a bit of <clears throat> there was a cadmium red maybe into some of the cadmium yellow. Which gives me sorry 
gives me a color that's in between. This is that kind of a color, just with two mixes. Sorry about shaking you there. And this one's got that kind of a hint to it, so I can enter in with that one. That's wet there, so I'm not going to go back to that for a while. But some of these up here have got that rusty coloredness in them. And of course this leaf, this yellow leaf uh, petal is also still wet, so I can't really do an awful lot there either. Um, and then back there isn't reddish. Down here is. I could start here, I think. Uh, there's bits down here that have that reddish feel to them. Particularly a bit there. I'm going to go back to my red and yellow mix. It's really quite dark, this colour here, so I might need to deepen the tone of it as we go. And then there's a point of it coming down there. It's much darker than what I've got, but as I say, I can deepen it. So I'll capture first the shape. Yeah, I'm carving around the air. And then kind of swirling. Although that swirl isn't a reddish swirl, so I'm not going to do it. And then there's some almost nondescript little bits of wrinkled petals. With half closed eyes, I'm just finding the general shape of them for now, with the intention of maybe later on clarifying them with a bit more care and deepening the tone of parts of them. Because I notice that parts are a good bit darker than other parts. So what I think I've got here is something like a mid-tone. It may lighten parts and it may darken, darken down other parts, but generally that's the tone of that area. Except for this lovely orangey-yellow glow that sits that about there. So I need to print off a bit of that. There's a lovely kind of an orangey glow that I'm noticing here. And that same orangey glow could happen down here too. And at the end of at the end of this one there's a hint of it coming in. Maybe this is dry enough now. I'm just mixing more of the orangey yellow again. Too. And then there's a kind of a greeny hint to some of that yellow. For example, the other side of this petal, I think, has a greenish hint to it. And that doesn't really look green the way I've done it, but it's not orange anyway. And then in here, there's a section of dark that reads more to me as a greenish dark.
there's some bits that are really dark in the yellow. Might need a burnt sienna maybe as a way to capture that colour. I'm just trying to locate similar tones in the greens as well now. So using burnt sienna and hooker's green and making up a colour for the dark green flash that I'm seeing here. And there's something very dark also here. Not so much green, but it's a similar depth of tone, so I think I'm okay using green there. Um, yeah, and this probably could be a little darker too. Hmm. And maybe every so often I wonder whether this is a tutorial on how to get yourself a bit lost in the painting because like I'm slavishly not slavishly I'm excitedly <laughs> plotting my way without standing back without even leaning back with this kind of faithful nodding of my head up and down and up and down and you know I could I suppose these are the kind of paintings that could work could be that it needs that level of care and consideration and quiet and stillness or it could be that it would have benefited from a different approach I don't know but this is the painting that's happening today and even I don't know but I imagine that I remember this process of having painted it with I, have, I remember the pleasure I feel painting it I say, I say that, but like, I wonder whether if, if the painting itself feels unsuccessful, I wonder whether really I'd be satisfied. It's an interesting one. Because I guess it's got to do with both the experience and that the outcome is fitting for the level of attention poured into it. Because that's the thing. And I do, mostly I feel like we're rewarded, you know, our attention is rewarded with a satisfaction, maybe, or anyway, somehow, somehow our attention, I believe, is rewarded. I think it's what it's it's the kind of it's um it's our um main attribute maybe I think I don't know something about that like I feel like it's the biggest gift we have is to is our attention and that we can lavish it on things or we can Whitter it, whitter it away, fritter it away. Like I often do, scrolling on my phone, or, you know. And it just feels like there's some sort of sacred thing being missed sometimes. The capacity of being in us to be really attentive and to feel the satisfaction of it, you know, sustenance of that.
And we said all of that, there's an impatience in me to get this. In a way, to capture, to find it, really. With an urgency, but also with a kind of um, a kind of fer- fervor that comes from really wanting to do justice to this beauty, you know, do justice to the what's revealed in it. Someone said once that um, yellow becomes brighter the more it's diluted, the brighter it gets. The more it's diluted on the white paper. It, um, it needs to be diluted with clean water though, and I don't know if I've got the... Um, I don't know if I need to get up and get some clean water start the video again after I think I might you know because I'm bringing a green hint into this and I don't want that okay so I'll see you for the next installment